question is, is what mics do you want to use? There was a real conscious decision to change the style and the sound and the vibe of Angels and Airwaves. I'm as aware as everybody else that by the time we finished the double album for Love, everything was starting to sound the same. That's kind of cool too. As soon as we closed the, the door on Love, I knew in my heart, not only was it time, I was super excited to bring in fresh blood, fresh perspective, and really catch people off guard. This record, if there's two things that I would just fucking vote that we have, is just the rawness and the ambience. The, the, the kind of bright, tinny, garagey thing that could be treated on certain things. And it might just be snare drums, it might be drums, it might be some of the vocal effects, but just that kind of Getting the band back into a punk rock foundation in a kind of like a garagey environment, I think, is so needed. Angels and Airways. Just to just to move back and off the that. polish a little bit. Exactly. It need, that's exactly my point, and that's what'll separate us from the few bands out there that are doing these very polished, yeah. anthemic things. We've done that. Open eye up, boom boom bop, boom boom bop, boom boom bop, boom 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 bop. So that crap will bring it up. I think so. One guitar. Working with Alon brought in a lot of incredible things into Angels and Airwaves that have not been there. When Alon came in, you have a guy that can play every instrument and play guitar infinitely better than I can and jump on drums and play anything he wants on drums. So, you know, I had to step back and, and really put that to task. So it wasn't a situation where I needed to relinquish control. It was a situation where I hunted down and found a person that I wanted to take over the steering wheel. Writing the record, Alon and I would come from very different areas to approach kind of the same target. You know, I'm very impulsive with the way I see art, and Alon is very measured. If, if those two notes were followed... Some kind of like that would be kind of interesting too. I think it'd be cool if it was a bit behind, so rather than... I mean, the, the bass will be punchy with the drums, sure. but with the fuzz... Um, rather than just having it lazy in behind. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's awesome, man. You already know I come from a place where music's very simple and it's used to deliver emotion. Um, he comes from a place where music is complex and it's used uh, to deliver technical pieces of art. go away 
away and try and digest what each other did and then come up with ways we can twist and turn that into something that we both like. I think, I think, it's, I think it's turning out. It's turning, it's going to, dude, I mean, we're just beginning with it, but I fixed the words and the lyrics. I think we're closing in on something. I think it's really cool. The whole song's about dreams. It took a lot of time for me to try and figure out how to write melodies over some of the things he was writing because they were just a lot different than what I've ever done. Okay, so what are you saying it should be? Instead of oim. Oim, oh, is that what I did? <laughs> yeah, oim. Instead of oim. I dream of God and game, die like will, a pie to flame, the glory of those hands in clay, and I'm fighting the push of the way, teenage in a wicked throne, the look of sin, the horror at home, won't survive their heart of stone. I'm gonna try to do a little bit more crackle of voice too, just to switch the tonalities up a little bit. Jump up the edge to awake, cruel words to catapult, the fingers bleed, scratch, dig for gold, you will catch up from young to old, and I'm crossing the crest of the fold. Let's get the first line of that one. Out cold and regenerate, rapid eyes like... Cool. Last one, here we go. I love the music so much. Yeah. I haven't landed a vocal I like as much as the music, so right. fuck, I can't let this song die with mediocre vocals. I wake to a fire in the realm, little lion safe and sound. It's a wild life, so wild, crazy, cannot tame the crowd. I dream of a god in games of blood, giving hell so pay it up. I'm a whore at home, the telephone, employee of the month. Go on to this next verse. I just have an ongoing discussion in my head how many times we want to swing to something that I think is really cool versus something that I think I know is has mass appeal. And I think on this record it needs to be way more cool than that. I just want to make sure we have that. And I don't know how often we're reaching that. I just don't know yet, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it's honestly, it's a way bigger challenge for me to write hooks and words that are matching this stuff because I haven't done as much of it. Mm -hmm. So it's just and I'm doing it, and that's why I'm singing songs three, four times over again. Mm. Because I, it's just taken a little bit more to get there. Yeah. If we look back to Anxiety or Surrender, yeah. the songs are what they are, but it didn't do what The Adventure did, which was a massive departure from everything you had done before. I'm just saying, if something is obviously hooky and pleasant and nice, that doesn't necessarily mean that it would do well. It does. Right. And I don't want you to think that I'm trying to take this music in what would be considered my direction or whatever because I personally wouldn't write something like this. Yeah. I just feel like I'm, I'm taking what you're bringing to the table and pulling it elsewhere, but it's not necessarily in my direction. I think everything that we've been doing is really interesting because it starts out with me and you come in you don't like it and then I usually come in and I change it and then you change it from there and we're usually at a place where we both can walk. We're in a no man's land between you and I. And I think that's where it needs to be. You know, I think in my mind it's more about like trying to be wrong less. It's not about trying to be right all the time, it's just about trying to be wrong less. The one thing that I learned from the, the bit of success that I had in my life was allowing the art to pull you in the direction it wants to go. This has to go for a while. I'm gonna come up with a, um, some type of a hook to go over it. You have to look for the one spark that's going to ignite the fire, you know. If you're, if you're, if you're aware, and if you have that open mind, if you have that open heart, you'll end up with a song that you never thought possible that really makes you much more diverse as an artist and it was much cooler. You found something unique. might end up completely different than you expected, but it's going to be infinitely better 99.9% .9 of the time. I'm about to get crazy right now. Keep going, I'm writing words. We're fucking on to some shit here. Good 
When you come my way, I feel like dying. Is that what I said? When you come my way, it's just like dying. I get off this way to die of love. That's so 80s. <laughs> I get off this way? Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's, it's like sexy. Heard of it? You know, you gotta look at it that you're trying to record an actual event of art that took place that was organic and grew in front of you and you were along for the ride. doesn't need anything because the whole thing's building okay. up. It's just after the first chorus, it drops back down into the reintro. So the reintro sounds a little empty because the vocal isn't there. This yeah. is the verse without the vocal. Yeah, we're just doing it. Yeah. Okay. So that's so, there. So right after that, into that last little verse, there's another verse, right? Yeah, there. we're still doing that over. Does and that make I, sense? Yeah, I like it. So it changes each time. So what if we do we'll do something melodic on the reintro where there's no vocal. Exactly. Then when the vocal comes back in, we'll do something. Yeah, so it's kind of like a when you were messing around on the bridge when we were getting the tones, yeah. you were doing like one that was like all over the place. Yeah. What was that? The verse is dope. Chicka chicka into the note, halfway yeah. through is dope. The riff is rad. It sounds like a bridge riff to me, only because it, I'm wondering, because it's more on, it's like a, it's a cool, soft melody, but the song's kind of moving and rocking. I don't know, but it's, it's kind of light. Yeah. Wipe the chugs that are on there and put your delay chugs underneath that you've been doing, uh -huh. and then do that on top of that would be kind of cool. The length of time on the Dreamwalker was very long, and specifically because we were reinventing the band. Alon Rubin came in and he had a very specific style, um, as I did, and they were so worlds apart. And that's why we were both so excited to do it, because I think we, we complement each other in really great ways. What you were talking about with releasing EPs, yeah. do you think that would detract from the importance of what this next release is supposed to be. The idea of an album is so overwhelming because you're like, okay, in my experience, it's always like this hardcore 12 hours a day, year long thing that I've done in the past. That's something like eight songs or 10 songs. For some reason, just seems so much more digestible, not as a heroic kind of mountain to, mm -hmm. to scale. What I keep focusing on is that there needs to be something complete to, to have something with it. To, to show for at the end of this span of time. That justifies it. Yeah. The, the truth is, to make, to do a few other things that the band needs right now, mm -hmm. it has to be like this album thing, and it has to be like a, followed by an EP versus the other way. But the other cool thing that's being said is that the album doesn't have to be necessarily 15 fucking songs. 
Yeah. It could be eight, it could be 12, it could be 10. Mm -hmm. It just has to be good and complete and, and, and a whole. Part of the process was I would work on something and then Alana would work on something. And either I or he would do something that we genuinely didn't like. After about nine months or so, we realized that we were talking in different languages. And once we translated that language into one language, it started to happen much quicker and, and it got really exciting. A year into it, uh, it became second nature for me and I believe for him as well. The biggest thing and the best thing you could do with art is to exceed people's expectations and give them something they weren't expecting. And um, that, those were our primary goals. And when Alon came in, um, you know, he's got a lot of firm ideas of what he wants, what he desires, and thankfully he does because he really pushed my limits of what I was comfortable doing. And by far, they were the right things to do. It was a tremendous success of two worlds meeting together. looking at, if not the, the second most significant album Angels and Airwaves has ever made, and I, I'm really excited for that.